Hello, hello out there, everyone, and welcome to my channel, The Reconverted Catholic. I'm CV, a Catholic apologist, evangelist, and lifelong theology student. In this video, I'll be featuring the next part in my series on Jesus. Uh, who is Jesus? Specifically, I'll be talking about Jesus as Son of God. Now, uh, Jesus as Son of God is core to uh, Christian belief, um, and more specifically, core to uh, Jesus' role in the Holy Trinity. So, uh, Holy Trinity being one God, three distinct persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, God the Father, uh, Jesus, the eternally begotten Son of, of the Father, and the uh, Holy Spirit, uh, all consubstantial with one another. So, again, one God, three distinct persons. Uh, now, um, for those of you who are more familiar with uh, the Bible, you know, Scripture, pretty well versed in Scripture, and even if you're just familiar with um, uh, basics of um, uh, Christian belief, um, then you know that uh, Jesus is known as the Son of God. Um, however, uh, uh, we also know that the Gospels do not feature Jesus saying the exact words, I am the Son of God. Yet, there are plenty of examples in Scripture where Jesus does not make a direct statement about himself, yet most Christian denominations believe in the associated teaching. Uh, for instance, Jesus never says, Hey everyone, I'm in a trinity. Uh, though Scripture contains passages that infer Jesus' role as Son in the triune God uh, relationship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A couple of examples, uh, check out Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, and also a Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 26. Therefore, a more productive approach is to look at the various ways Scripture points to or more directly establishes Jesus as the Son of God. First, although divinely appointed sonship has a range of elevated meanings in the Old Testament, the New Testament writers view these meanings as allegories to Christ. Now, as a short sidebar, I recently had a dialogue with a Muslim um, regarding uh, Catholic Christian belief versus, uh, you know, versus Islam, and uh, this comes up a lot. One of the major objections from uh, Muslims about the Christian faith is, well, where does, you know, where does Scripture say that Jesus is, in fact, Son of God, or where does Jesus say he is the Son of God, or where does even Jesus say he is God? Well, there are plenty of... There, there's actually plenty of evidence to uh, support why Jesus is the Son of God and Jesus is God, right? It's all throughout Scripture, actually, in, in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, but that's a, more of a video for another time. Uh, but what came up in this conversation also is about sonship uh, or uh, divine sonship in, uh, in sacred Scripture. And, uh, well, you know, we know that their kings are known as sons of God or, you know, people known as sons of God. In fact, even in scripture, angels are known also as, as uh, children of God, sons of God. Um, so then how do you, you know, make this uh, distinction, right? You know, so what makes Jesus, you know, so special? So I had, you know, explained to him and again, more in a video for another time, a kind of deeper dive explanation I'll give. Uh, you know, based on an interaction with uh, the Muslim. Uh, but what's important to hear, know here is that, one, um, sonship, is, is, as we understand, in the, um, or having a divine, you know, sonship or being a son of God, okay, can have uh, multiple meanings in Scripture. And if we look at the New Testament writers, you know, and many of these writers were Jewish, so came from a, uh, a Jewish background, and uh, also were very well familiar with uh, what we know, you know, old, the Old Testament or Old Testament scripture. Um, it's important to, uh, it's important not to put all of, of sort of, you know, understanding scripture, right, as just that all Jews at the, around the time of Christ or just all Jews in general, right, have a just a uniform, okay, belief or understanding of uh, sonship and, and again, you know, how to interpret what that means. Uh, that's not to say that um, there aren't valid interpretations about, again, um, about, about sonship and, and how it was used in, say, Old Testament scripture versus how Jesus is identified as the Son of God and, of course, uh, the Messiah and the King, right, our King, um, and that he fulfills uh, Old Testament prophecies and allegories and what's known as typology, right, um, in uh, Old Testament scripture uh, pointing to New Testament scripture. Um, 
but all really to say that um, if we look at the New Testament writers and um, how they, you know, viewed, again, uh, sonship, okay, and again, as Jesus being son of God, uh, that we want to consider their perspectives as as valid or having valid points or valid understandings of interpreting scripture and not going back and reinterpreting scripture but we're talking about people here who deeply understood okay uh or overall had a deep understanding of of, of jewish scripture and therefore we're actually looking through a jewish lens to then point to jesus christ as messiah um, I've mentioned in the past when I've studied uh, Hebrew scripture, um, in fact, I was a professor of mine um, uh, taught me this uh, quite a long time ago about, you know, when reading the Old Testament, first look at it through a Jewish lens. Um, and then you actually still may be, you may st or still be surprised that, that you'll come to the same conclusion or you'll still come to your same conclusion as a Christian that Jesus is in fact um, our Savior, okay, the Savior of humankind, that he is the Messiah, the expected Messiah. And so he does fulfill Old Testament prophecies, and he is, in fact, um, again, the uh, Son of God. Um, so, uh, again, all that said, just to give some uh, background, and when we're looking at Scripture, you know, when we're um, uh, doing uh, what's called hermeneutics or, you know, in interpretation, okay, uh, Scripture, um, that... Uh, it's important to look at the entire corpus of Scripture, you know, all 73 books and, and, and you know, in the Bible, but and as it pertains to the Old Testament and how it points to Christ and the New Testament, um, to, uh, again, um, look at all the uh, connections, okay, uh, between Scripture and how they point to Christ, and also based on New Testament writers, as they then also refer to New uh, Old Testament Scripture to um, to point to why Christ is uh, the expected uh, Messiah, um, that we need to look at these passages more carefully and understand how they do, in fact, have a uh, connection. And as well, St. Augustine uh, uh, famously said that the New Testament uh, lies hidden in the Old and the Old is revealed in the New Testament. So here uh, are, for example, uh, uh, well, a couple of examples. Um, uh, and as I mentioned earlier uh, about the New Testament writers of having, you know, again, these, you know, uh, this now deeper understanding of allegory in the Old Testament and again, how um, these allegories point to Christ. Uh, well, one example we have is uh, Jesus fulfilling uh, Hosea chapter 11, uh, verse 1 which says, when Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. And uh, uh, also, as the Davidic king in the Old Testament is divinely uh, appointed, uh, including being called God's son when coronated, uh, so too does Jesus have an elevated status as David's royal descendant. And that's key right there, right? And understanding that, you know, David, of course, is king, you know, king of Israel. And then as part of, we understand Old Testament prophecy, that a new king come, right, and, um, and would be divinely appointed and would be royalty in the sense of a divine royalty, right, as we understand as Jesus, as, as king of, um, of all humankind, of the universe, of everything, right? Um, so uh, Jesus, therefore, his status is also elevated as the Son of God. But again, uh, divinely right and pointed. And again, if we combine these passages with scores and scores of other passages, as far as again that point to Jesus Christ and His sonship, um, and as we'll continue on here uh, within this video, hopefully it'll become even clearer why, uh, when we look at the entire corpus of connectors and um, and references to Jesus as Son of God, and even what sonship means, that Jesus. Um, is the uh, begotten Son of God, right? Born of, of, of Mary, right? Born of the Virgin Mary, and what was even prophesied, right? Uh, not only in the Old Testament, but when um, Mary is called upon to uh, carry, right? Um, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and what that means for the world, for the salvation of humankind. Um, 
I had mentioned uh, uh, passages just uh, well, a couple of minutes ago. I mentioned passages about uh, 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 the, the Davidic king in the Old Testament as being divinely in, um, uh, appointed, and uh, including being Jesus uh, uh, or being called God's son uh, when coronated. Um, and then I also mentioned that, of course, that Jesus also has this elevated status as because of being David's royal descendant. Um, and yet also in the, in the understanding the spiritual sense, right, is Jesus is, well, Jesus actually in, in his nature of being fully God and fully man, uh, that his kingship, his sonship, right, is, um, is, is even beyond what we understand as an earthly uh, kingship or earthly sonship. Some references I have here, like if we go back to uh, Psalms, uh, chapter 2, verse 7, also chapter 89, verses 26 and 27. And of course, if we look at uh, Luke, chapter 1, verses 32, uh, it ties in my points all together. Um, but as I went on a kind of bit of a, a sort of a, a kind of a tangent just a minute ago about talking about sonship and, and Jesus' role, right, as... Um, as a divinely appointed uh, king and king of, of everything, right, of, and of humankind. Um, you know, how do we distinguish between the Davidic uh, kingship's royal status as God's son and Jesus' kingship as meaning he is the consubstantial son of God? And I sort of partially answered that, but here's uh, hopefully a better and even more, you know, detailed answer, a clear answer. One way involves how Jesus refers to God while preaching or praying. So throughout the Gospels, Jesus often refers to God as Father, as we see in uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 27, and Mark chapter 13, verse 32, and uh, Luke uh, chapter 11, verse 13. And while Jesus' usage is markedly distinct from how Father is used in the Old Testament, so in Jesus' case, he gives the impression he has a direct familial relationship with God, even referring to God as Abba um, while praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, which Abba is basically like saying Dad, right? So a very personal, intimate uh, connection, reference to God of calling God Father, uh, Abba. And um, so again, this is the equivalent of a modern day child saying uh, Dad to a biological father. Yet Jesus takes it a step further and distinguishes his use of Abba with how he referred to his disciples' relationship with God. Uh, in short, um, Jesus encourages his disciples to use Abba in prayers as a way of forming and edifying a spiritually familiar relationship with God through Jesus Christ the Savior. So Jesus is right, the Son of God, so we understand. Uh, he is consubstantial with the Father. He comes to right, incarnate okay, as fully God and fully man. He has this, of course, therefore, because he is, he's uh, eternally begotten and has always existed with, with the God, God the Father. Now he's, in, uh, he's incarnate in human form, but he's fully God and fully man. Um, and he therefore has this similar to a child with his, or say, a son with his biological father has this, um, again, has this uh, relationship, father-son relationship. Jesus has the same and then wants to transfer this to uh, the disciples of also establishing a familiar relationship with God, right? A covenant relationship with God, that is, and, um, and understanding the uh, spiritual importance, the greater spiritual meaning of what that means of, of God as our father and entering into uh, the relationship. So, so Jesus being the guide, right? Or the, the, um, uh, the, the root meaning of, of what it means to have the relationship with God the father. Um, and Jesus, of course, being the actual begotten son of God. And then we as God's creation, you know, of course, as children of God, right? of having a spiritual familial, uh, a, a familial uh, relationship in, in a spiritual way, of course, uh, uh, with God. Now, um, along with Jesus' words uh, indicating he is God's son, um, the term son of God is used in several different circumstances. Uh, Jesus' disciples refer to him as such uh, we have in uh, Matthew 14, chapter 14, verse 33, and in chapter 16, verse 15, uh, Jewish leaders and enemies mock him as the Son of God. So uh, we see this in Mark chapter 14 and uh, Matthew chapter 27, 27, verse 40. 
And a voice from heaven calls Jesus my beloved son during his baptism. Uh, one example in uh, Mark chapter 1, verse 11. So it's just to name a few examples, of, well, of many. Additionally, Jesus' actions and preaching project to him not as not simply a human making divine claims. He authoritatively corrects Jewish law. He forgives sins. He performs miracles. He reveals God's message and will. And he presents himself as the gatekeeper to God's kingdom. Um, furthermore, Jesus is worshipped on many occasions. Uh, we have examples of this in Matthew chapter 2, uh, verse 2, chapter 14, verse 33, and also in chapter 28, verse 9. Meaning that, is, meaning that Jesus' relationship to God indicates being, you know, ontological, of being, of same being, okay, to, of, well, actually of, of the same uh, substance, right, uh, consubstantial, but yeah, in one, in being with the Father, um, he is what the uh, name Emmanuel means, uh, you know, God is, you know, with us, right? So, so we can see that God, again, as being a son of God, right, and not just a, say, a earthly king or just fully human king and not a, a divine or fully God and fully man, okay, he is, well, fully God and fully man and demonstrates uh, this through his actions, right, and, and his authority and um, even how he communicates with God. Uh, so all around, showing that uh, here is uh, somebody, here is a being, okay, that far transcends just an ordinary, uh, you know, human being, or one who's not fully God and fully man, right? Uh, not divine, um, and 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 again, and acting on that that authority. So there's this big distinction, right? That is, as again, as Jesus as a son of God, as a you know, having this divine sonship, um, he's clearly acting as God, right? Um, and in fact, why? Uh, some of the uh, Jews, particularly the Pharisees, had challenges with Jesus and why he was charged for blasphemy. Um, and hence why a major reason why he was crucified, because of portraying himself, you know, as God, right? Uh, as the Son of God, but yet one in being with God. So much more than, of course, than just this, um, say, like more earthly kingship. Um which also means, of course, that Jesus is uh, the eternal, is ter eternally begotten of the Father. Uh, he pre-exists creation, was sent down by the Father to fulfill God's glory and humankind's uh, redemption. Uh, a couple of references we have in John chapter 3, verse uh, 17, um, and uh, John chapter 5, verse 24. Uh, so Jesus is conscious of this relationship with the Father, as we see in John chapter 8, verse 25. And his pre-existence is instrumental in creation and becoming the Word made flesh, as we know from John chapter 17, verse 5, and John chapter 1, verse 14. Lastly, as Jesus succinctly yet powerfully states in uh, John chapter 8, verse 58, before Abraham came to be, I am. And as I am is also Yahweh, and what Yahweh means, which is literally I, I am, in fact, yeah, the word Yahweh is rooted in of the verb, which the verb meaning I am. Um, Thomas, one of the apostles of Jesus, rightfully calls Jesus my Lord and my God in John chapter 20, uh, verse 28. So uh, all I shared here, uh, all that I've shared here, you know, are some of um, many examples we have without scripture that establish uh, Jesus as the uh, son of God. Again, as Jesus is fully God, fully man, you know, God incarnate, and, um, and eternally begotten, having always existed with God the Father, and uh, not just something that is, you know, or God is something that is, uh, or Jesus is some, uh, someone is just part of creation, or somebody who was an earthly king, or was maybe just a wise individual, or um, had, you know, uh, cared about God or believed in God and had some, you know, uh, special abilities or intelligence to be able to go out and share a gospel. No, he's, he is God. He's God's, right? He's, he's God revealing himself uh, to humankind. 
and um, and and therefore, you know, establishing that relationship with us, well, that covenant relationship, and we understand as new covenant, right? That Jesus is the new covenant. Uh, he's come to again free us um, uh, from sin, uh, from bondage, uh, from the consequence of we understand of original sin, and to be a new creation with Him, to live as a restored creation. Uh, with God through, again, uh, Christ's uh, salvation and achieved, of course, only as uh, as G as uh, fully God, fully man, or as coming as, you know, coming down as a uh, human being, as a man, and, um, and therefore um, sharing in our, uh, our suffering, um, understanding the human experience and taking that to then um, uh, free us from a uh, sinful nature. Uh, but ultimately also to understand that Jesus is, um, as I mentioned, that his sonship, his um, divine sonship, uh, of course, as I said earlier, far transcends just merely being well, not just merely in the sense of anything bad or <laughs> or uh, insignificant, um, but uh, obviously being um, of of being God, right? Um, the third person in the uh, Holy Trinity, uh, again, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that Son uh, being the um, again uh, divine Son who is our example. As also serves as an example of what it means to have a family relationship with God, be that is a spiritual, uh, a spiritually familial uh, relationship with God, and uh, to continue that relationship, nurse that relationship, which is a big part of our belief, uh, Christian belief, which is not only to accept um, Christ's salvation, uh, Christ as a son of God, accept his salvation, but also to be eternally in that relationship with him so to continue in our faith in our salvation and and grow and ultimately in that covenant relationship with god i thank you for watching this uh, video here uh, if you have any comments feel free to uh, leave them here well of course in the comment section um <clears throat> uh, or you're welcome to email me at trcatholic gmail.com again trcatholic gmail.com uh, and until the next video in this series, uh, please stay safe out there and God bless.